So welcome to this uh, video or this squat tutorial uh, by request with the amount of people asking about uh, squatting techniques, which is the best squat. Now I just need to say right up front that there is a limit to what a biomechanics can do, uh, coach can do online. I'm going to do my best and it's why I'm going to do it over a series of tutorials. So some of the topics we're gonna be covering are squat mechanics, uh, biomechanics, how we can improve them, maybe how we can test them, how you can improve movement, understanding movement profiles, what's functional, um, how we can improve our squat, deciding which squat we're gonna use, because there are a lot of variations to the squat. One of the most important things is our start point. We've got to decide what our goal is. Is it simply to achieve better human movement, better movement profile for daily living? Or is it specific to a sport like powerlifting, which has a very specific technique to squatting? Are we going to use a load or just body weight? If we're using a load, where will the load be placed? What type of load will it be? Will it be a bar? Will it be a, a kettlebell? So we need to find the answer to this question ultimately prior to beginning. So what's interesting about the squat and the reason I'm so geeky about it is because the squat movements which relate to the lower body, lower half of the body, upper body as well, but if we focus on the lower half of the body mechanically, the use of the ankle, knee, hip joints um, in unison to provide a movement will cross over when it, when it comes from practicing the squat into other human movements. Walking up and down stairs, um, bending down in cupboards, um, sitting, standing, using the toilet, anything where you are using your hips, knees and feet together. One of the key points that I really want to get across here um, and the reason for doing a series of video tutorials is the key question I get asked is, what's the best way to squat? And as you already probably realized is it relates to your goal. But ultimately, one of the challenges most people face is understanding what is limiting their squat. So we're asking these questions because we may find it difficult. The body works as an integrated system, and this is the part I really want to communicate in this video tutorial, which is why I'm gonna break it down into pelvis, spine, shoulders, knees, and feet. So one of the things I think we're starting to become aware of more and more is the limitation to our lifestyles now in relation to how we use our body. So sitting at desks, driving, um, sitting, flipping everywhere, um, and pretty much always with a 90 degree hip, the body is starting to try and attempt to adapt to these static positions and sedentary lifestyles. Bent over computers, texting on the phone, and so what's happening is we're getting these little grumbles, insidious aches, niggles, maybe recurring injuries as, as a result of poor biomechanics from these compensations because the body is a master of compensation. Now there are assessment programs out there that look at you squatting to understand uh, where your limitations are. This is a subjective an analysis in terms of where any problem may be coming from. And the reason for that is that uh, the, with the body being so amazing at compensating, if you have a single dysfunctional joint, the joints above and below will compensate to help you perform a better squat. Whereas intrinsically, there could well be a single joint really limiting everything that's happening, or even several areas of the body limiting what's happening. So what I wanna go through here is understanding the difference between bad technique and a physical intrinsic compensation coming from one or more of your subsystems. So you have three subsystems in the simple world of uh, biomechanics, your mus muscles or your myofascial system, your skeletal system and your neural system. And any compensation or dysfunction in any one or a multiple of those can influence on the way you move. We know that your hips can influence your knees, can influence your feet, your feet can influence on the, in an ascending biomechanical way, shoulders can influence spine, hips, and feet and so on. So this is what we're gonna be starting to explore in relation to your squat, your squat limitations, and how to improve your squat by understanding how well or how badly each part of your body moves. So what we're gonna start with is a benchmark. So what I want you to do is basically what I'm doing, <laughs> is squat down on your haunches, set up your camera, and then you're gonna sit down so you can see, you can see in the mirror behind me, um, about where you come to, so where this one's cutting off the hips, what I want you to do is get a good shot of your ankles, knees, and hips, and then see how well you can sit up. Now, 
I have been practicing this for a while, which is why I'm a bit of a geek about it. So don't worry if yours doesn't look like mine. You may be more hunched, you may be higher up, and you may be hunched over or in some kind of variation of that. So find a squat position, put the camera side on, around about knee level, come down, see how far you can get, make sure every part of your body is in the shot, exactly side on so we can see those angles. If you're willing to share them publicly, great. If you want to share them privately, no problem at all. This is going to be your benchmark. You don't have to send it in at all. Uh, but for you, this is your start point. And so as we go through and start addressing movement limitations, we're going to reanalyze your first benchmark, your first image, um, and see how far we get. I'm going to teach you some other tests for your body as well. But that really is the goal, is to improve the squat or look at what's changing in the squat so it's the best benchmark to start with. So what we're going to do over this squat series, if you keep your eye out for these video, video tutorials, I'm going to be taking you through different ways to test, measure, analyse and understand which parts of our body may be affecting the way we move in general, but in relation to the squat. We're going to be discussing all the variations of squat, as I've said earlier, of which there are many. And what I'd like you to do is to message me, you can DM me, you can private message me, PM me, whatever all the acronyms are, uh, or you can do it publicly through any of the social media platforms you're watching this uh, video through. It's gonna be up on YouTube for sure, uh, but I'll do links through from any of the other social media platforms. Let me know your questions. I'd like to know, I've had a lot already, which we will run through on the next video, um, and see which sort of questions we're gonna be answering from. Should the knees go forwards? Do we need to go below 90? Should we only go to 90? And what is the best way to squat if you are struggling? And is it strength? Is it stability? Uh, what is the best way to help improve on those things? So if you've got a question, let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you on the next one.